Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I wanted to uh, actually follow up on a comment on my video on how to get started with Kafka, um, which someone wanted to see, hey, great showing me how to get started using Kafka with Docker, but how do I actually perform an ETL process with, with Kafka? So that's what I'm gonna show you today. Um, what we're gonna do is build a Kafka script um, in Java that is going to have us listen to a host um, that is emitting data about uh, different stocks. Um, and then our Kafka stream is going to take any new data that is produced from that endpoint, process it, clean it up, and then store it in a backend Snowflake database. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. Um, and if you don't know how to get started with Kafka, definitely check out my previous video where I show you uh, how to actually do that. But today, let's get functional. So here, what we'll do is create a new file, we'll call it etl.java. Um, and then within here, first thing we're going to need to do, as we do with almost any piece of code, is import a series of different uh, requests. And actually, before we even get started within our Java file, we're going to need to go into our POM XML file and make sure we have all the required dependencies. Um, so, which I'm just going to go here and copy and paste a few different dependencies here. So under dependencies, we have copy and paste these in. And this should give us all the dependencies that we need to actually run Kafka and also have our Snowflake GDBC driver. So we have our Snowflake GDBC driver for connecting to Snowflake, the HTTP client for REST API call, so we can collect that data from our uh, stock endpoint, and then this JSON processing library for actually processing JSON files. Then we can go back into our Java application and we are going to import a whole metric ton of different packages. So HTTP get uh, library, the closable HTTP client, HTTP clients himself for us to interact with HTTP endpoints and kind of monitor them. Entity utils, just come sign utils for uh, interacting with objects. Our producer and consumer clients obviously need those um, for actually producing and consuming data. String deserializer and string serializer for reading and de or de normalizing and denormalizing strings. Um, JSON nodes so we can process JSON data and object wrapper for uh, interact with that XML data, then our Java connection, driver manager, prepared statement, collections, and properties. These are just different connection utilities that we're gonna to use to actually interact with uh, Snowflake. So once we're done setting up all of our libraries, we'll create our public class, which is kind of the bucket for our entire script here. And then we're going to set a few different variables here. So under stock data processor, we are going to have a Kafka broker, a topic. We're gonna to set here a group ID, Snowflake URL. So put in your account details here, your username, password, um, your API that we're gonna use. And let me actually put in the real API here. So in this case, just getting Apple uh, ticker in, uh, ranges for a particular day, but you can adjust this to whatever you want it to be, um, whatever kind of stocks you want to process and test this ETL on. Um, then once we're done setting our uh, different variables up. We'll then create a uh, public, sorry, a class here, or not a class, but a function here that's going to uh, actually process our data and define the different steps of our pipeline. So here, we're just defining public static void. It's going to insert a uh, list of strings. And then here we have our stock data processor. So this is a function we're gonna define later on, or we already defined up here, but actually calling it. And then we're producing stock data and consuming stock data. So this is going to be collecting our produced stock data from that API endpoint, and then also storing it in our destination Snowflake database. So after we've defined our main function, we're then going to define that produce stock data function you see there. So here, public void produce stock data. Um, and then we're going to import some properties and assign them. Um, so here, properties, props, just a, a properties object with different properties here. Um, and so here we have our con uh, producer config, so our bootstrap service config, our Kafka brokers, key serializer, class config, um, string serializer, getting the name um, of the actual stock and producing the stock data. Um, and then what we will do down here is actually use these producer configs to 
uh, interact with and listen to that HTTP endpoint and then get that data and store it in this response. So here what we're doing, um, you'll notice, is using that closable HTTP client to create just a default HTTP client for interacting with this API endpoint, then getting that API endpoint using this request, then storing that response in a string. So, you know, making sure that you're using that two string serializer to uh, put it in any normalized format, then recording that as a produced record within our Kafka uh, environment and then sending that. So Kafka environment has a producer and consumer node. So we're gonna send this now from the producer node so that our consumer node can then take that data, run its process on it, um, and then it can pass it into our Snowflake database. So we'll just add a close bracket there. Make sure you don't miss that one. And then next, we can define our consume stock data function. So to get started with our consume stock data function, we'll define it, create another function definition here. So public consume stock data, then create another properties array here. So similar to what we did before, just setting up our consumer objects. So here, public properties. Consume properties, a lot of the same here, but with a addition of a group ID configuration here. Um, and you'll see why that is there later. Um, and then the rest of it is create another function. So with this try keyword, um, where consumer is a new Kafka consumer, um, and it is subscribing to a collection on our topic. So the new topic that we just created um, when we emitted that data. Then what it's going to be doing um, is taking that data from that topic. So while true, um, that it's going to pull it every 100 milliseconds um, to make sure, hey, are there any records? If there is a record, take that new data, read it, store it, and then pass it down to our store data and Snowflake function. Um, so then in, within our, so this is, all this is doing is just taking the piece of data from our producer function that is just making it available and reading it from the data API endpoint, and then taking the data and now making it available to our next function, which is going to process it and then bring it into Snowflake. So just so you're clear on kind of the workflow there and how that all fits together. Then we actually need to define our store data and Snowflake function. So here we'll create another function, store data and Snowflake, in this case, passing the JSON node data, uh, throwing an exception if it fails. And then here, what we'll do is we have a series of try that connection um, with the driver manager with all the different connection details we set up here. So using our driver manager, then preparing a statement. So using that connection object, passing a prepared statement, which is inserting into stock table, these different values, and you're using these uh, question marks as kind of the wild cards for the data that you're actually gonna be inputting from um, your API from the API endpoint. So here, making sure that you save this data within symbol as a text, price as a double, timestamp as a text, just normalizing the data. That's that cleaning process I was talking about earlier. You could drop columns, you can only upload certain columns. So if you know I only wanted to upload the symbol and price, I could just delete this timestamp field and only have the symbol and price update. And then here, statement execute update. Um, here we have just a statement that's actually going to close this uh, little blocks out and execute this statement and upload our data into Snowflake. Now, I want to kind of go back and just layer in a couple things in this script for best practices. Everyone's favorite. Um, so what I'm going to bring in here is just a couple new libraries, um, which are going to be wake up exception, logger, logger factory, um, and then also a SQL connection library or exception library. So here just allowing me to read SQL exception statements. And then what I'm going to do is, and this is just like a common format I wanted to show just for if you're ever trying to implement error handling into your Kafka statements. Um, what we can do here is producer send, um, so record string, so here, it's a simple, relatively simple addition where what you'll do is at the end of this producer send, instead of just leaving it at, hey, producer send record, here what we're doing is we will actually um, have a check built into this where we will send the record, but if it's not, s emit a message that has says, hey, error sending message to Kafka, and then it'll actually read and print the exception in your logs here. 
um, and that you know you also get a log message for successfully sent message to Kafka um, or fail to produce stock data. Uh, and then you can do a similar thing down within the uh, try you know actually bringing the consumer data into uh, or processing the consumer data. So if I go here, one second. Let's see, so where would we layer it in here? So for consumer data records record, store data in Snowflake. Um, and yes, so what you want to do is something like this, um, where here, for, yes. So I've definitely screwed up one of the, uh, oh, actually I didn't, yeah, okay, this is good. Um, so here, similar function, just giving you a better way to handle errors um, within your Kafka script if they arise. Um, and now that is truly all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful uh, for getting started with ETL scripts, and I hope this really helped the guy that asked for it. Uh, but, but what else, hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.